In this video, we're going to look at naming type 1 compounds, and then um, if we're given the name, write the formula for a type 1 compound. Just to review, a type 1 compound is a compound made using any metal over here that only has one charge, like calcium or magnesium. It wouldn't be something like cobalt because there's two charges there, or iron because they have two charges, not those ones. But the any metal with one charge and a non-metal, those are type 1 compounds. I guess any metal with one charge and a complex ion, those are also um, type 1 compounds. And we use the same thing to name them. So here's sort of the naming conventions uh, that we'll use. So we always name the metal or the cation first, and we, uh, the, we name the non-metal, and when it's a charge, we call it an anion, we name it second. The cation, the name always just comes from the name of the metal. So if it says calcium, you, the name of the uh, metal is calcium, you just say calcium. But the second one for the anion, we shorten it up a little or change it a bit. So we use the first part of the anion name, and then we throw an eyed at the end to make it sound right. Most of them are, are uh, uh, straightforward. There's the all one, either one that uh, sounds a little funny. Okay, um, just one other little thing here. If you have a metal and you hook it up with a polyatomic ion, you don't do this last change here, this eyed thing. You don't do that with a polyatomic ion. You just leave it as is. Here's a couple of examples. So if I have uh, CaCl2, Ca, that stands for calcium. So I would just write calcium. And then Cl is, stands for chlorine. And so I'd have to use this thing here because that's the nonmetal. Uh, and you can see those here. So calcium's here and chlorine's over here. So if I have uh, calcium and chlorine, so the second one I have to do this eyed thing. So what would that sound good? Chlorine, but I have to make it an eyed. So chlor, and maybe instead of putting an ene, I'll put an eyed. So calcium chloride, that would be the name of that compound. Here's another one, magnesium and this is bromine, so I'll put an ide on it so it would be bromide. Okay, next one, Na stands for sodium, so it would be sodium. And SO4, notice that these are two elements there, whereas over here there's just one. If there's two elements like this, I'm probably thinking that it's a polyatomic ion. It's one of these things up in here. And that particular one right is right there. Um, and its name is sulfate. And so this one, it's the second one, but I don't do the I thing to it. I would just call it sodium sulfate. Okay, here's some to try. Uh, they're all type 1 compounds. Uh, see if you can just name each of those. Maybe press pause, name them, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, hopefully you paused and named those. Here would be the answers. Oops. Up, go up. So Na, sodium bromide, magnesium oxide. I'm just checking to make sure I got them all right. Good, I think so. Notice with these, oh, I made a mistake there. Notice with these that the symbols, if there's two letters in the symbol, the first one's always capitalized, the second one's always small. Also in naming the compounds, you never use capitals, unless it's at the start of a sentence, and that's just English. But otherwise, they're all lowercase. Okay, so that's naming type 1 compounds. Now we need to also be able to go the other way. So if I can name them, now I also need to, if I've been given um, a name like uh, magnesium, magnesium fluoride, I need to be able to give a formula for that, Mg, whatever it is. Notice on these other ones that there were some numbers here, like a 3 and a 4 and and with lots of them, like MgCl2, there'd be a 2 there. Lots of them have numbers there, but that doesn't, uh, when you're naming the compound, for type 1 compounds, you don't do anything with that number. The number's important, but for naming type 1s, you don't worry about that at all. However, if you are going to uh, write the formula for a compound, you do have to worry about those numbers. And here's how you do it. So, if you write in a formula for either type 1 or type 2, really, 
It's all about balancing charges. Each cation is willing to give up a certain number of electrons, and each fluorine is able to, or each anion is able to take a some certain number of electrons. Uh, but they do; they have to do those in proportions. They can't just say, "Oh, here, here, take two this time, take ten next time." Can't do that. It's always a certain number of electrons that are exchanged. And so, we're, when we're writing the formula, we have to take that into consideration. And so what I do when I'm naming compounds, I just basically do it in three steps. Sometimes I'll do it in my head, but if it helps you to separate them out, that's a good idea. So for example, if I'm wanting to write the formula for sodium sulfide. Sodium, I write the ions down. So I go Na, that's the metal, but they say to write the ions. So I have to look on my chart. Uh, here's sodium right up there, and I have to look at its charge. You can't see it real well. But look on your own periodic table, it's a 1 plus. So, let me go back here. So sodium has a 1 plus charge. And then sulfide uh, is S, and its charge, let me go up there again, its charge, here's sulfur right there. Let me erase it a little bit. Sulfur's charge is right there. Um, but now notice that you can't see, on the old periodic tables, they used to put charges, but on the new ones, they don't. Uh, the way the charges work, and without getting into lots of detail, anything in this column would be a 1 minus charge. Anything in this column is a 2 minus, right down to you get to the staircase. Anything in this one is a 3 minus charge. And those are the only columns we really worry about. Since sulfur is in this column, it has a charge of 2 minus. Okay, so let's go back and put that at 2 minus. So now what I need to do is I need to balance the charges. So here I have a 1 plus and here I have a 2 minus. They have to be balanced. So hopefully you can see that really what you need is another one of these sodiums. So a way that you could graphically show that is you could have two sodiums and one S2 minus. So now together these give me a 2 plus. This is a 2 minus. That's balanced. So when I write the formula for that, I just count up how many ions I need. So for sodium, I need two of them, and for sulfur, I just need one. Notice that those charges are only used to help me balance, but they're not, I don't put the numbers from the charges down here. This two indicates that I needed two sodiums to balance that one sulfur. Okay, let's try a couple more. Calcium fluoride. Feel free to pause. I'll just keep going through these. Uh, pause and see if you can try them yourself if you want, once you have a bit of confidence. Okay, calcium, look it up on the chart. The formulas or the ion charge is Ca2 plus. Fluorine, the charge is F minus. So if I have a Ca2 plus and F is just a minus, to balance, I need another one of those. That gives me a total of two minus charge. I have a two plus, they're even, Stephen. Now down here in the formula, I just write how many of each I need. I just need one calcium, but I needed two of these fluorines. So I'll put a two there. So one calcium, two fluorines. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum's charge, look off your chart. That's a three plus. Oxygen is a two minus. Ooh, this one looks a little bit harder. So if I have Al3 plus and an O2 minus, if I have another one of these, but that gives me four minus, and I have a three plus. Uh, how about I do another one of these? So that'll give me six plus all here. Here I have four minus. If I do another oxygen, now I got six minus on this side, six plus on this side, even Stephen. So how many of each do I need? Well, I need two aluminums, and I'll need three oxygens. So the formula for aluminum oxide is Al2. O3. Let's just try a couple more. Again, if you're feeling confident, pause, try it, and see if you get them right. Magnesium, look off your chart, it's a 2 plus charge. Nitride, that's nitrogen, it has a 3 minus charge. And it has 3 minus because nitrogen's right here in the 3 minus column. Everybody in those columns have those charges. Okay. Uh, looks like this is the same thing. So I I need two of these. That would give me a six minus, and then I need three of these. 
to give me 6 plus. So therefore my formula is mg3 n2. Again, those numbers down at the bottom just tell me how many of each of those ions I need. Now notice this one, it's similar, but this one's magnesium nitrate versus nitride. Nitride was the one way on the right side of the periodic table, but since this has an 8, it's probably a polyatomic ion. So let's write it down. So magnesium is an Mg2+, plus, but then nitrate, I'd have to go to my periodic table. Nitrate is, oh, it's in here somewhere. Look off your chart though. But the formula for nitrate, Mr. Mitsunaga made me memorize that one many years ago. Formula for nitrate is NO3 with a charge of 1. So hopefully you're getting the idea now that this is a 2 plus, that's a 1 minus. I'm going to need to have two of those. I'm just going to sort of jump that step because I know I need two of these to balance that. So I'd write it as Mg and then NO3. So the NO3 sort of goes together. That means it's a nitrate. You can keep that sort of together. But I need two of those. I can't just sort of write a 2 here because that sort of looks like a 32. So what we do is we, if we say we need two of these, we just put them in brackets. So Mg bracket NO3 bracket 2. That will be the formula for magnesium nitrate. A couple more. Calcium sulfide. All right, calcium is a 2 plus. Sulfur, look off your chart. It's a 2 minus. Hey, they're even Stephen already. So I just need one calcium for every sulfide ion. Done. Oh, here's another one of those sulfate things. Sulfide versus sulfate. Let's try sulfate. Sulfate must be on the polyatomic ions. If you look it up, I believe it's an SO4 2 minus. Hey, again, they're even Stephen. Perfect. So I just need one of each. So it would just be CaSO4. That would be my formula for calcium sulfate. Last two. Press pause, try them. Potassium carbonate. Potassium's a plus, K plus. Carbonate is a CO3 2 minus. Charges don't balance, but again, hopefully you're getting the idea. It looks like I'm going to need two of those to balance off that charge. So I need two potassiums and one carbonate. So I'll write it as K2CO3. Last one, zinc chloride. Zinc's charge is a 2 plus. Chlorine's charge, again, look these up off your table. It's a handy thing to memorize them too, so you don't always have to be looking up at the table. Looks like I need two of these to balance off one of those zincs. So my formula will be, I need one zinc and I need two chlorines. Okay, hopefully that helps you both uh, naming type 1 compounds and writing the formula for type 1 compounds.